Bitcoin has officially arrived on Wall Street. The watershed moment for the crypto industry happening today. Bitcoin's big day. All of the 11 crypto ETFs are now trading. It's being called an industry game changer. It finally happened. How many years? 11 years we've been waiting for this. A new asset class. Legitimacy and accessibility, mainstream reach, and Wall Street acceptance. For the first three years of thinking about it, I was a naysayer, and about two years ago, I, I switched. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually, you know, as I said in the last two years, I'm a big believer. But Wall Street's embrace, it was never part of the original proposition. It was supposed to be so much more. This blockchain revolution, this decentralized revolution, is going to change the way we live. The beauty of Bitcoin is that it's electronic. This is a great way to create freedom in a lot of countries where they don't have it. Money is the nucleus of functioning human society. And we've been able to a breakthrough in computer science and engineer the best version of that that is accessible to everyone and equitable for everyone. This week on Tech Check, how Bitcoin lost by winning. It took the SEC nearly a decade to approve a spot Bitcoin ETF. And when it finally did happen, some of the biggest voices in crypto, they felt vindicated. We were optimistic. We, we were steadfast in our conviction around this. But this is really the culmination of 10 years of work. This is a historic moment in the sense of it's the first time that the Internet and Wall Street, they've had this healthy tension for a couple of years, uh, even a couple of decades. And it's the first time Wall Street blinked. Listen, you know, the earliest adapters always get riches. But why was this such an important milestone? An ETF or an exchange traded fund, it's an investment fund that tracks the performance of an underlying asset like stocks, currencies or gold, something recognized by the financial community as having value. And for decades, some of the most prominent and well-respected leaders in finance firmly did not believe that Bitcoin had any intrinsic value. I could care less what Bitcoin trades for, how it trades, why it trades, who trades it. If you're stupid enough to buy it, you'll pay the price for it one day. They're gambling. They're not investing. Sometimes I call it crypto crapo and sometimes I call it, no, crypto sh But ETF approval has ushered in a new era for Bitcoin. It gives the digital asset status, regulatory oversight, increased accessibility and liquidity. It proved the naysayers wrong. There is an odd love affair uh, with something that flew in the face of what Jamie Dimon said, who's the most respected banker in America, and what the late Charlie Munger said. So uh, the opponents of this, I think, were now being viewed as fuddy duddies. And because ETFs give investors exposure to the value of an underlying asset without directly owning it, investors no longer had to worry about crypto native platforms like FTX or Celsius or BlockFi going under. Those who had uh, their money in uh, the, the National Bank, Bank of Sam Bankman Freed are kind of like they, Jesse James robbed them. There's no Jesse James when it comes to the ETS. Yes. Bitcoin institutionalized. But what if Bitcoin lost the war by winning this battle? It was supposed to be a revolution, a centralized peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. Bitcoin is now being used to buy regular things from restaurants to retail, so why not real estate? Restaurant Freehold just started accepting Bitcoin as payment. Others are even accepting it as payment for bigger purchases. How many yachts have you sold using Bitcoin? So we've done about a dozen crypto transactions. But it never took off as a form of payment. Even in El Salvador, where Bitcoin was made legal tender, it's still not widely used for payments. And it didn't bypass the financial system either or become a democratic alternative bringing services to unbanked populations. Instead, it was subsumed, another asset class that exists within our traditional monetary structure. There's an irony in the midst of this. Satoshi Nakamoto said this was gonna be a decentralized system and, and Finance, this has led to centralization. Think about the irony of those who say this week is historic. This was about centralization and traditional means of finance. Like treasuries or shares of Tesla or gold. Hedge funds, they can trade it. At your own risk, you can even add it to your 401k. Even BlackRock, the biggest asset manager in the world, has a Bitcoin ETF and is on pace to become the largest holder of Bitcoin in the world hitting a billion dollars in assets under management just three days after launch. We were very happy with the flows. It appears that we received about 40% of the flows yesterday. BlackRock, though, was a symbol of the traditional system that Bitcoin was designed to challenge and disrupt. Now it is a core part of the Bitcoin story. And while Bitcoin hasn't seen wide adoption as a form of payment, it has become a more mainstream investment. 
Investors have so far poured more than $800 million into Bitcoin ETF funds since they were approved. But the more Bitcoin that's held in funds, the less that is available for users. Its use case as a digital currency is further away than ever. Bitcoin has now further solidified itself as a store of value, not as a means of exchange. Investors, I think, should be uh, aware that this, the underlying asset, is a highly speculative, volatile asset. And uh, amongst its uh, use cases is really uh, for illicit activity, money laundering and sanctions. Put another way, Wall Street did what Wall Street does best. It took a risky asset and made a market. It subsumed Bitcoin into the system before Bitcoin could build its own system. And now it's also reaping the rewards. Here's our Kate Rooney. So one of the sneaky, kind of under the radar winners in this whole ETF story and Bitcoin ETF story is actually the Wall Street Bank. So they're what are known as the authorized participants. They're sometimes called the APs. You've got names like JP Morgan, Jane Street, Cantor Fitzgerald on this list of the trading desks who are behind the scenes. They're creating and redeeming shares. But as part of that, they're basically picking up the breadcrumbs. They're taking a slice of each transaction. If there's a lot of volume going into these Bitcoin ETFs, which has been the case in the last few trading days, they're the ones really winning on the back end. And the irony, even some of Bitcoin's biggest critics will end up the biggest winners of the ETFs. The banks, especially JP Morgan and their trading desks, are gonna make some money on this. As for the revolutionary DeFi projects and blockchain-based technologies that only crypto can solve, they've been slow to materialize. Bitcoin has also fallen short of its promise as a hedge against inflation and volatility. Its decentralized nature and limited supply that was supposed to be an alternative to the dollar when the dollar's value is decreasing. Instead, Bitcoin's value has fallen alongside traditional stock markets during periods of market turmoil or when central banks have signaled interest rate hikes. It's behaved more like a speculative tech stock. Okay, let's put aside Bitcoin's original promise. So is it a good investment or store of value? Let's break it down. The SEC approved 11 Bitcoin spot ETFs on that watershed first day, and it expects more to apply for trading in the coming months. There's little daylight between each of them. How are customers, the public, supposed to think of the distinctions between the way you're doing it, the way BlackRock's doing it, the way Fidelity's doing it, the way Grayscale's doing it? We're the only ones with both uh, the crypto and the ETF expertise. We've done this before. We've done it in Germany. We've done it in Canada. We've done it in Brazil. It's about the asset manager that's behind it. We're a crypto specialist. We've weathered all different types of speed bumps and advancements within the crypto ecosystem. So the biggest difference, at least for investors, comes down to the fees that each broker charges. And with so much competition, it's been a race to the bottom. Almost every broker slash fees in the days before the approval, with most cutting to 20 to 30 basis points, and many eliminating fees altogether for the first few months. It could mean that not all of them will survive. I think in the long run, you're gonna have two or three that actually uh, win. As for where Bitcoin itself goes from here, that has been hotly contested as well. Thematic ETFs, they usually launch at peak hype and peak price. Traditionally, ETFs mark the high, right. the short-term high. The first ETF to track Bitcoin futures, that launched in October of 2021, and it topped a billion dollars in assets in just two days. Those who bought in at the time, though, they also got in near Bitcoin's peak, when one Bitcoin was worth about $61,000. The ETF tracking the price of Bitcoin, it fell 72% in its first year, and today it's down 50% since that launch. As the Wall Street Journal puts it, Thematic funds typically launch only after investors have already bid up the underlying assets, from the internet funds of the late 1990s to the green, cannabis, space, and SPAC funds of 2021. Investors should know not to pile into already popular ideas, yet they keep on buying high and frequently end up selling low. But that hasn't stopped crypto's most fervent believers from making bold predictions. Our base case uh, is in the $600,000 range. Our bull case, uh, and we think the probability of the bull case has increased with this SEC approval. This is a green light. Our bull case is $1.5 million by 2030. I think in the next 12 months, uh, something over 100000 you know, maybe 150000 in five years, you you know, something around half a million would be potentially achievable. Like a stock or the price of oil, Bitcoin will only get more price targets as its Wall Street journey just begins, solidifying Bitcoin status as an asset class for better or for worse.